rate of Fourier equation had um, equal roots, what we're going to have a look at just now is what happens if our if our auxiliary equation has complex roots. And if they've got complex roots, we're going to have to find those roots and we're going to write down our general solution in that form there. If you know the form, it's quite easy to put the values in. We just need to know the real unimaginary parts. So let's jump right into the example. Uh, find the general solution of this second order differential equation. It's homogeneous and we always check to, to see what's my right hand side looking like. It's homogeneous, it's equal to zero. So straight away, I can compile my auxiliary equation. I'm getting better at spelling that now. We use our constant terms to create our equation. So I've got one m squared plus four m plus six equals zero. We can do a little check using the discriminant b squared minus four ac is four squared minus 4 times 1 times 6, which is 16 minus 24, which is negative 8. It tells me, with a negative discriminant, that we're going to have complex roots. Also, that negative 8 is going to be used in the uh, quadratic formula, so we have to jump straight into the quadratic formula for this. So m is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Negative b is going to be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of, we've already worked out b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant is uh, negative 8, divided by 2 lots of 1 is 2. Um, I can simplify or change a negative, square root of negative 8 becomes the square root of well, I know that i squared is negative 1, so it becomes 8i squared all over 2. And I can split up the real and imaginary parts. So it's negative 4 over 2, plus or minus. Uh, root 8 is the same as 2 root 2. Um, i all over 2. So we've got root 8 in itself is 2 root 2, and the square root of i squared is i, which means that we can simplify that by negative 2 plus or minus root 2 i. Okay, so that's the two complex solutions to our auxiliary equation. We now want to write down the general solution. So we've, uh, we'll have a look. The general um, solution it's going to be y equals, let's just take a wee quick look back. Uh, we've got y equals e to the px, now p being the real, real part, and then a cos qx plus b sine qx, q being the imaginary part. So let's just write that out. y equals e to the px times a cos qx plus b sine it doesn't really matter if the sine and cos terms are the other way around, but the important thing here is to remember that P is negative 2 and Q is root 2, which means that our solution is going to be Y equals E to the negative 2X multiplied by A cos root 2X plus B sine root 2X. And that's it. We have uh, used the general form of it, of a complex root, um, in order to find the general solution of our second order homogeneous differential equation. Okay, so that's the, the three homogeneous equations. We'll, we'll go on and have a look at non-homogeneous equations, and we're going to use all of these processes in order to solve them, them as well. So, have a practice at that. If you want to know a bit more about it, I'm sure you can find different places to discover why the general solution is of that form, but I'm not going to uh, go into the, the background to it. I'm just going to say if the roots are complex, use that form for your solution.